Hey, what's going on investors? EBS Invest here back with a brand new video. Today, I'm going to be releasing to you guys my very own um, valuation calculator. You can grab this down in the description below. Just make a copy for yourself. Today, I will discuss and share with you how you can utilize this tool for your own gain as well as help you understand how I utilize it so you can run the calculations on your own. First, we're just going to go over and we we'll use a basic stock like Apple. I'll run you through how you can do the own calc, and then you can just play around with it yourself and put in your stocks of your choice. So the first thing you'll need to find is you'll need to find the current EPS. Um, this big equation here is basically the equation, but it's going to run it through automated through sheets. But to find the earnings per share, you can use um, Yahoo Finance or whatever you deem as best. And you just grab the earnings per share of the trailing 12 months, and you just copy and paste it right here. All the grayed out numbers here are things you do not change. The only things you change are the earnings per share, the growth rate, and the yield. That's it. Those are the only things you can adjust. You can adjust the gray things, although I do not recommend it unless you want to. So you put in the earnings per share. Then the next thing that we need to look at is a PE no, no growth. So this is the basic PE ratio, and he uses an 8.5, but I think that's too optimistic, so I use 8 to be a little bit more conservative. If you want to use 8.5, go right ahead, but I think it um, makes the numbers too large. But you keep that the same. You keep that as a standard variable, so I keep mine at 8. The next thing is the growth rate. This is something you can adjust. So you can go into Yahoo Finance or Seek and Alpha, whatever you utilize, and you just grab the growth rate. You can see they expect 8.7, 8.9, so I just put in an 8, okay? We're not actually evaluating Al Apple today. I'm just detailing how you can do this process. The next thing is the 2G. The 2G is a multiplier to the growth rate, so that 8 becomes 16. So you can, like the 8 here, you can change this growth rate but I don't recommend it it's a multiplier if you want to be very conservative let's say Apple's going through like some very hardships you know maybe some lawsuits are on the rise you can change that to the one and a half but you can see how this changes the numbers and if you change this to a seven and a half it really brings down a lot um, or if you brought this up to an eight and a half you know things of that nature so keep this the same and only adjust this if you really want to be conservative, like if you wanted a one. You can see how just changing it a little bit really messes with it. So keep these two the same. Don't ever change these unless you want to. But if you change one, just know it's really going to affect um, your numbers. So I think it should only be changed if you want to be more conservative or if you want to be more bullish. The next thing is the average bond yield. So this is the average... Um, bond yield percentage of AAA corporate bonds since 1962, and that's 4.4%. You never change that. Keep that at 4.4. The next thing is the yield. This is something you do change. So all, all you got to do is you go to the internet and you search AA corporate bond yield. I like using the Fed, and the Fed gets this data from Moody's. So maybe if you have Moody's, you can use that too. And you can see it's at 4.43 still. And you just plug that in. And you have to realize the bond yield makes it more expensive for companies to borrow. And so with that in mind, it could be this number manipulates the price very much so. Because imagine in 2020 when the bond yield was 2.14, if we plug that in, you know, imagine this is 2020, you get an intrinsic value of $300. So the bond yield is an ever-changing number that you should always adjust and make sure that it's in there. And right now, because the bond yield is higher, it's more expensive for Apple to borrow, making it less likely that they're they're going to grow. They're going to, it'll be more expensive for them to do, take out loans and whatnot. So get an intrinsic value of 145. So once you have run through your entire calculator, maybe you've adjusted this to be more conservative Maybe you made this a little bit more bullish. Whatever you deem as necessary per stock, you'll get your intrinsic value. Next, it'll take the current price of the stock, which is $133, and it'll go through these numbers, 
the margin of safety, it'll multiply them to give you a uh, acceptable buy price. So if a 20% margin of safety, we would say Apple is a buy at 116. Like I said, remember, this video is not to determine Apple's price. This is just an example. So, I hope I walked you through this correctly. We'll just go through a little deep dive. Basically, copy and paste the earnings per share. Don't change this number. Change the growth rate to whatever you deem necessary from your research. Don't change this number unless you want to. Never change this number and make sure this number is up to date. And then you'll get your intrinsic value. And then with your margin of safety, you can adjust. Then you'll get your acceptable buy price. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember, if you have any questions, please drop them below. I hope I was thorough. I know it's a little bit confusing, but I hope you bared with me. Um, remember, drop some support down below, whether that's a comment, a like, or a share. It really helps with the algorithm. helps me grow as a small YouTuber. And please, I'm serious, if you have any questions about the calculator, um, just let me know. But a copy will be down there in the description for you to take. And I'm really looking forward to you guys utilizing this for your own portfolio. This has been EBS Invest. See you guys in the next one. Peace.